How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. I am a, I'm a little hoarsed today. You could hear it in my voice. I had a very long night. <laughs> it was my father's 70th birthday yesterday. We had a uh, big... Uh, it, it actually was amazing. I had... People come to the house that I haven't seen in 15 years uh, for my dad's birthday. We had an excellent time. A little too much of a good time. But I'm here to talk about Roman Reigns returning to SmackDown. Very interesting. I, I'm, I'm really curious how a babyface Roman will be portrayed in this company. Because historically, never good. He was never a great babyface, but when he became the tribal chief and he became the head of the bloodline, uh, just, man, amazing stuff. So I'm very curious how that's going to shape up. All In, talk about shaping up. All In is totally starting to shape up. Matches are getting announced. Still some key matches missing. We'll go into that. I want to get our producer's opinion on this, too. Collision results. I believe this was the last, right? This was the last of the Texas tapings. One more. We have one more Texas taping here. You know, I think it was successful. They got money from the municipality. You know, essentially it was, you know, f whatever, 1,800, 1,200, 1,500 people in the building. I, I, I think this was a test to see if this is sustainable. Also, legendary professional wrestler, the Booker man himself, Kevin Sullivan, has passed away. We're going to talk about this at the age of 74. A very unique character at a time where you did not see things like this. Interesting stuff. Paved the way for a lot of guys in the world of professional wrestling. We have this and a whole lot more coming up on Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. A lot of news to talk about. Uh, let's start with something. Uh, not so happy. Not so positive. But... Man, what a legendary professional wrestler, a booker. Kevin Sullivan has passed away at the age of 74. You know, I my first memory of Kevin Sullivan would be probably my dad getting, he was going down to Virginia, and he would always bring back these wrestling magazines that he would get at like a truck stop or like a, whatever, you know, a, a rest stop. And he would always bring, you know, those wacky covers. And, you know, Kevin Sullivan was all over those things. You know, just the demonic, the prince of darkness, this this, this uh, devil worshiper character. And it was something that you never saw before. Especially, listen, I was a kid. I grew up on WWF television. Early days, right? Talking 1987, 1988. You didn't see things like this. But... He's best remembered for that role. Obviously, he rivaled Dusty Rhodes in Florida. He was also the booker in Florida and, and WCW. That famous moment with Brian Pillman, the pencil booker man. Fascinating stuff. He had a hand in creating the NWO, including keeping Hulk Hogan hidden for, day, for the day before. I, I think that's one of the funniest stories that... Kevin Sullivan essentially, and I'm, I'm adding to this, right? But he kidnapped Hulk Hogan. That should have been a storyline of its own. He kidnaps Hulk Hogan, puts him in his house in Florida, and doesn't let anybody get to him, including his agent, so they can't sway the what they were about to do. Fascinating. WWE did a very good job uh, with a video package on SmackDown, and AEW had a graphic up as well, and he was mentioned on Collision instrumental guy in the world of professional wrestling. MG, our producer here, uh, a couple years older than me. I'm being, I'm being very Cute. nice there. I'm being nice. <laughs> a couple years. Uh, your memories of Kevin Sullivan because you, you, you watched way more Kevin Sullivan in, when it was happening than I ever did. Well, he was one of those pockets that I didn't see really early on. Um, the Really, the Dungeon of Doom stuff is where I really, really got to know you know, the character, because they yeah. kind of recreated the Dusty stuff in WCW in the 90s, you know, with the, you know, he was synonymous with um, uh, Paul White or Big Show 
or then the giant getting over, yeah. right? Uh, you know, and they put the title on him with, you know, Kevin Sullivan was kind of had his hand in that. And that's where I really remember him. And the one that I just, for some reason, it just came up this week. Uh, we were talking about it because of the, uh, we'll go, uh, because of the Jeff Jarrett D- Danielson match in the mezzanine this week or in the concourse, I goes, this just, this just has uh, Kevin Sullivan versus uh, Chris Benoit up in the stands all over it for me. And it yeah, made me it, remind me of that. Then the next day we found out he passed. So it was, you know, the Kevin, Su- the Kevin Sullivan, Chris Benoit um, rivalry that turned into reality is something yeah. so bizarrely fascinating to me. The fact that he essentially, mm-hmm. you know, he booked his divorce. <laughs> uh, well, he booked a lot of things in that, didn't he? Booked he booked a lot Jeez. of things, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and also, he, you know, he was one of the reasons why Chris Benoit, Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malenko, mm-hmm. Perry Saturn took off to WWE. Mm-hmm. Conan was supposed to go as well, and so was Shane Douglas. You know, a lot of this had to do with the fact that Benoit did not feel comfortable that uh, Kevin Sullivan would have been able to do a positive job here. There were there were threats happening. It was going to become a HR disaster, and they were able to leave and you know have had the the second part of their careers in WWE. Very interesting stuff. A uh, legendary wrestler and Booker. Very instrumental. What a, a highly intelligent man. I spoke to Kevin once in my life and just a very smart guy. Very, very smart guy and understood wrestling and charming. Very charming. Those if you that, ask anybody, those that, that, that I've that's heard, what they say. Those that I've heard talk to him usually come away with some, like, feeling smarter about the business. That's how I've always thought of him. You know, I, um, just I there's it. a couple of those guys. There's a couple of those guys. I want to say, you know, um, someone that I had a one-on-one with was Tom Pritchard, another one of those very highly intelligent guys. And when you're done speaking to them, you, 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 it almost, you get this enlightenment of, oh, wow, now I see it. I had, yeah. uh, I was hosting some, I think it was WrestleMania 29. There was something that I got paid to produce a show in the studio, and Tom Pritchard came. He was on it. And forget about what happened on that show. Uh, cause it wasn't really remember, you know, I don't remember it as much, but afterwards this man sat on my floor in my, in my living room and played with my dog and just spoke about wrestling. What a, I got, I got, a, I got a, I got a seminar from Tom Pritchard in my living room. <laughs> <laughs> X-Pac was not also supposed to show up, but he didn't that. make it. <laughs> yeah. Not too many people could say that. And, and you know what? I, I don't take it for granted and I'm very blessed that I've been around these amazing minds. Uh, but Kevin Sullivan, one of one of those guys, for sure. Absolutely. Let's go into some of the stories here. Uh, Tony Khan did a teaser on Twitter. And he said the most important announcements in AEW history are essentially coming. The suite was right before Collision. Uh, you know, uh, this to me speaks TV deal. We've we've been talking about this for two years now, this TV deal. And I get, a, you know, I've been getting a lot of comments, people saying, like, you've been you've been talking about this for two years. Well, yeah. It feels like it. <laughs> well, yeah, because think about all the things that have happened in two years in that company. They added a second show. They've uh they got a they got an increase in pay. They've had people come in and out. You know, they are an instrumental part of Warner. Uh Live programming is very important. First round programming is very important. 52 weeks a year programming live is very, very important and very unique. There's nothing other than the news, really, and professional wrestling. I mean, what else is 52 weeks of live programming? The weather, the news, and professional wrestling. And you know what? Wrestling may not be the most carniest of of all those three at this point. I, I, the deal is going to happen. It's just a matter of how much, what are they getting? Where are they going? There are some key indicators here that, that, that say a lot. One, the ring of honor, possible, uh, rebranding of AEW presents ring of honor was very telling when Tony mentioned it. He, 
The one thing about Tony is that when you do get bits and pieces of stuff like this, there's a reason behind it. The other thing that I always was fascinated by is when somebody told me that Tony was very interested in having uh, a possible simulcast on digital, right, on, on streaming, rather than just being on linear television, having a simulcast that is happening at the same time on Max. We saw this with the NBA. We've seen other properties do this as well. The Olympics is the doing The Olympics it, and I has been doing you, it. I've watched all the Olympics on Peacock. So. Have you really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you were, you're a fan of the, uh, the Australian breakdancer, right? Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, but apparently it's not coming back, the breakdancing. Uh, also, yesterday we saw, I mean, one of the most beautiful suplexes I've ever seen in my life. Kennedy Blades of Team USA hit a stunning German suplex. Uh, and if there was ever a perfect German to hit in, in actual wrestling, right? Not professional wrestling, in Olympic level wrestling. I've never seen anybody deliver it like that. What a, how would she not be on the radar of getting signed to an NIL? Uh, I don't know, but very impressive. Very, very impressive. When we come back, we're going to talk about SmackDown, Roman Reigns, AEW Collision, Wrestle Dream announcement, and a whole lot more. Also, uh, there is an NIL, uh, somebody that got uh, congratulated, NIL uh, class member winning Olympic gold. We'll talk about that as well. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, my producers are yelling at me like my detractors on Twitter, on X. By the way, you can follow me on X, at Andrew Zarian. You know, John, our, our producer here that does all the technical stuff, he goes, hey, you know what? I'm sick of you talking about this deal. Can it just get done already? And I'm like, dude, I know. I'm in the same boat. He goes, it's been going on for years. I'm like, I know. When, when those guys are, are messaging me on X, and they're like, you've been talking about this for years. I'm like, now I have a guy in my ear heckling me while I'm doing the show. It's seeped into the real world. See, he's yelling right now in my ear. He's saying, you know something. You're not saying. I don't know. I know I've said everything I know. But the deal will come. Also, Sean, uh, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful has been on top of this. And I, I believe he tweeted that there will be information coming soon. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's see. Where do we go? Dealer's choice. Where should we start? Let's go with SmackDown. Cody opened the show. With plans of announcing who he will face at Bash in Berlin. He was interrupted by Solo and the rest of the Bloodline, minus Jacob Fatu, which is not a good sign. Uh, Jacob, during SummerSlam, injured his ankle, his leg. He was wearing a boot after the show. He deemed a rematch in which Cody, this is uh, Solo, he deemed a rematch in which Cody completely turned him down. To go to attack Cody, Kevin Owens comes in for the save with a chair. After the bloodline leaves Cody, uh, leaves, Cody tells Kevin Owens that he wants to face him in Berlin. Owens initially declined, saying there was more worthy people than him. Why would anybody say that? Baby face? I mean, uh, 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 I mean the baby face is offering you a title shot. There are two baby faces here. And you're like, ah, I don't deserve it. He's a former world champion, universal champion. Well, the fact that they're mentioning win loss records again is a positive for me. You like that? It makes sense to me. Yeah, I like, yeah. Mm. That's good for me, yeah. at least. Yeah. Okay. You know what? They'll have a great match. Um, I don't know. This, this card is shaping up to be, you know, I'm, I'm interested in the Damian Priest and Gunther match. I'm interested in this. Uh, obviously, this is a in between pay per view. This is the you next. Mean we, I don't think we've mentioned what. I don't think we've gotten the Gunther. Uh, the, the Gunther. You mean the Gunther? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gunther and G Randy. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm reading Damian Priest on my screen here. Uh, uh, Randy Orton and Gunther, and that'll be, and that's a great international match, right? You have Gunther there, and you have Randy Orton, which is uh, transcended into a legend. At the, whoa, frames are falling. Things are falling here on the studio. My dog's. Frame photo as the Shah of Iran uh, is falling here. 
Um, I I think that's a great match, and the crowd will eat it up. And this is a nice secondary match. You know, everybody will leave home happy. Everybody will go home happy, I should say. After uh, Cody did that, he decided that that's the match now. WWE Tag Team Championship Contenders match. The Street Profits defeated A-Town down, down under. I see a breakup coming, huh? With uh, Austin Theory and Grace Waller, yeah. yes. I think it it's time. Yeah, it needs to happen. Yeah. You know, I, I think they're both really good. Uh, Austin Theory, he got, he got a weird... He was positioned very strange, right? He became Vince's guy, right? On TV. Yeah, and that, and that might have been his uh, downfall. And that really during, was his downfall. Kind of, that re- kind of put him... Kind of sent him in a fork that he couldn't come back from easily. You know, I saw him wrestle on the indies a uh, couple times for Evolve. And I always felt, I mean, I felt that there was something with him. He has something. For sure. Uh, I think a singles run would be much better. Him and Grayson feuding would be good. That would build both of them up. I think this is a nice step for them. Listen, a lot of people don't look like Austin Theory. Great body, great look, handsome guy. Good wrestler. You have to use that. You have to you have to propel the strengths here. Interesting. I, I'm I'm curious how that ends up. Backstage, Cody was discussing with Nick Aldis about giving uh, Kevin Owens an undisputed WWE Championship match. Owens enters the room and continues the protest. Nick Aldis br- brought up. He's another guy, man. I want to see him wrestle. Nick Aldis. He was. I mean, he's still. I mean, he wasn't, he was still in his prime. He was still wrestling tremendously. Aldous brought up that he had discussed potential, uh, potentially giving a title shot to Roman Reigns. Owens pointed out the rematch clause hadn't been enforced in years. So I guess they're talking about it this now publicly, right? Like technically the champion that loses has an automatic title shot. You're automatically still the number one contender for a rematch. Because now you're number two. Been, yeah, it hasn't been since Shane came out all those years ago and said it's antiquated. We're not doing that anymore. When was that? And it had 2016 when they did the brand split. Oh, is that what it was? Oh my gosh! I'm pretty yes. sure it was that far back. Maybe in there somewhere, 16 or 17. It might have been after they did the fake. Um, oh, we were going to listen to the fans now and. We're firing everybody, and the yeah, McMahons yeah, yeah. are taking. Remember that whole thing? And then oh, they came. came back, they came out to the out. ring, and they said, you know, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. and they did nothing. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 they they changed for two weeks, and then Vince said, "We're not doing that," and then yeah. they just ignored everybody for like yeah. three years. <laughs> yeah. So Owens pointed out the rematch clause hadn't been enforced in years, and there were other people in the locker room that deserve a title match over Roman. This led to all this making it official: Bash of Berlin, Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens for the undisputed WWE Championship. Great. And Owens did this Owens did this in a way that got me fired up for the match. I mean, yeah. this was a very passionate, quick little promo that set everything up. So we're getting a babyface versus babyface match. It'll probably be fun as hell. It'll be a fun match. Maybe maybe Kevin goes heel. Could be. I'm sure the bloodline will interrupt and beat them down and something. You know, they, they could do something wacky. And it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter because that crowd is going to eat up whatever they do because they don't get wrestling like this. Ever. WWE's not there. We'll see. Jade Cargill defeated Alba Fire. This was, I believe, her fourth singles match since signing up with WWE. I, I Somebody said to me, I, I think I read this online. Uh, that if you add up all of Jade's singles matches in AEW and you add up all, um, if you add up everything here, there was some like weird time discrepancy. I think she's wrestled 29 seconds more. I, fascinating statistic. I don't know. LA Knight US Championship celebration. He came out to a big reaction, huh? Oh, he's over. <laughs> and a different it, it was the theme different? Yes, they 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 changed his theme. They changed it and you liked it. Uh I was indifferent to it, but people did point it out online. I didn't notice People it did like it. Someone... People were liking it. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it wasn't bad. Uh, LA Knight came out, big reaction. You know, he is a throwback. He really is a throwback to 1998 when it comes to a wrestler. His promos, uh, his style of wrestling, his attitude. You know, this is something that you don't see too often. He's more grit than polish, which I like. I'm saying personality-wise. Uh, it's nice to see it again. He would end up being interrupted by Santos Escobar setting up the next match. They also showed Lou Ferrigno at ringside. <laughs> I found this fascinating for one reason. Do you Why? remember in 19... Well, you would have been young, but 1991, the WBF, the Bodybuilding Federation... Yes, and he, and he He was he going bailed. to be the star, and he ended up pulling out on Vince. And I don't think this... I don't think this guy would have been loud... Was the, on the same freeway as the arena if Vince was still in charge. <laughs> was the story that he pulled out because they were going to steroid test? Yes. yes that was it's, allegedly it's, the story, right? It's something like it. I, I honestly, I used to have this mapped out. I had been talking about doing something, something more in-depth on this for years. So I had it all written down, but I forget the actual steps that happened there but yeah. you know what maybe we could do that for uh for matt men on friday next week we could go into lou ferrigno's wbf uh run <laughs> i mean listen oh, i you know that was a i remember ordering that paper because my bo my father was a bodybuilder uh and so so was my grandfather my grandfather was a real body like a, like a ridiculous bodybuilder um so it was we would always watch those bodybuilding competitions. And when it happened, I was so excited because I thought I was like, oh, it's bodybuilding, but kind of like wrestling. And yeah. I was really disappointed that it was just a bodybuilding competition with <laughs> with, you know, Heenan on commentary and Vince and, and uh, Gene. That's uh, where was, you get the famous striation line. <laughs> look at the striations. Gary Stridham. Wow. Look at those stri striations. Fantastic. Uh, a vignette for Giovanni v Vinci was shown, promising he's coming to SmackDown soon. United States number one contendership match. Santos Escobar defeated Andrade. Good match. These two are good. Uh, there was a Kevin Sullivan video. Tag team championship contender match. Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa defeated pretty deadly. You're seeing the progress of this tournament. Bloodline was shown backstage. Going out to confront Roman Reigns. Solo ensured the Tongans he would show up. Now I'm going to leave you with a little teaser. When we come back from our break, I'm going to talk about this segment. I wanted to give this some time. Roman's return to SmackDown. This was a hot segment. I really liked it. I saw some people being critical of it. I have no idea why. I, I thought this was done exactly on how they should have done it. Uh, you know, this is, this is a plus for them. This is a major plus to have Roman back. I'm very curious how this ends. Will we see a Roman Reigns and CM Punk in the future? We're going to find out. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, this Roman Reigns segment, and I, and I tease Punk, not because there was anything that alluded to this, but you're thinking about these potential matches for Roman, right? He's now, he's out of this bloodline. I mean, this is eventually going to culminate, and he's a babyface, but you're going to have to remove him from the bloodline stuff eventually when this culminates. Most likely, probably at war games. They're going to do a, a tribal warfare or whatever they want to call it. You're going to have Roman's side. You're going to have Solo's side. Maybe Dwayne gets involved. Maybe there's something else. But I'm really intrigued to see this version of Roman having matches with guys like Drew McIntyre that has peaked and continuing to grow. CM Punk, this version of Seth Rollins, you know, it, it's, it, it's going, to, it's not going to be the same that it was years prior. The booking philosophy has changed post Vince. The presentation has changed post Vince. Very interested to see how this goes. But Roman returned, Solo deemed, uh, demanded he come out and try to take his, uh, what is it called? Ula Fa Ula Fala. Fala. His Ula Fala from him. I didn't chili wanna... pepper chili pepper uh, necklace for those that <laughs> need a visual representation. Yeah, need a need a vis <laughs> yeah, a visual. Roman came out to one of the biggest pops uh, I I've heard in, in recent years. I don't care for his new theme, by the way. That's just me. I could be wrong. We all have our musical opinions. 
He takes out everyone at ringside. He attacks. Oh, by the way, uh, one of the funniest moments of this is how Tangaloa oh. held that title. <laughs> he has to be doing it on purpose at this point. He didn't hold it like this. Mm -hmm. He held it like this. Like... I can't at one people side on the radio can't see you, uh, so. people cannot see it. I'm so sorry. He, he, he held it in the most awkward way. And I'm like, he has to do that on purpose. That's I, I, I laughed when he, when he held it up. I really laughed. Uh, he came out, he cleared everybody at ringside. He attacked solo, very similar to what he did at SummerSlam. He got his hands on a necklace briefly and pieces of it went flying. Roman has yet to say a word, only punching people. Maybe next week he'll come out and do a promo. Monday Night Raw yeah, he's for tomorrow. Rhea Ripley kicks kicks off the show. Randy Orton appears. Intercontinental champion, champion Braun Breaker defends against Sami Zayn in a two out of three pinfalls match. I guess they're giving this some time since it was only five and a half minutes on the pay-per-view. No one contenders match for the women's tag team titles. Damage Control versus Shayna and Zoe Stark. Damian Priest versus Carlito and American Maid versus Alpha Academy. Cool. And that ends our WWE portion of the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. This was interesting. Danielson, uh, turn on, before we go into collision, Danielson said the odds are he will get neck surgery by the end of the year. This was the Jim Ross interview on collision. Uh, I think it's good to have Jim back. He's... Uh, Obviously, one of, one of my favorite commentators. But I like nice him doing him these interviews. Doing these, exactly. And he's yeah. done these mm -hmm. for decades, and it's always been really good. He's really good in that soft setting of just him and whoever the other person is, and they discuss what they're doing. I thought they did a very good job here. Collision started off with Darby Allen and Hologram defeating the, defeating the premier athletes, Josh Woods and Tony Nese. Dustin Rhodes narrated a video package hyping up the Texas bull rope match between Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo. This was really good. That was a really yeah. good way to do that. It was a really good way. And Dustin is so, so good. Uh, Texas bull rope mm -hmm. match. Thunder Rosa defeated Deanna Perrazzo. This was pretty bloody. As both, both women were bleeding. Thunder finally got her win back. Uh, very good job. I, I thought they put on a, a really, really... Uh, Good match. I, I enjoyed this. Hard work, both of them. Now, in my favorite, a very 80s style <laughs> vignette for the Outrunners played. Okay? It looks I, like it was shot on an old Panasonic VHS, like one of these that my dad had growing up. He had a JVC. He had one of these JVCs that he would take to the park, I, and he had backup batteries on it. You remember those ridiculous things? Oh. He had this, mm -hmm. and it was like this. It's amazing how this stupid it could have almost phone. been one of those. Yeah, it could have been one of those eight millimeter uh, film yeah. films. Is that how it looked? It was so. Yeah. It, it had such that retro vibe. I just cracked up. I thought it was so. Yeah, dude, look at look at this. So they ended up facing FTR. They defeated the Outrunners. Truth Magnum and Turbo Floyd. There's no better names in professional wrestling than that. I want to see them win some. They're great teams you know to what? get guys over because you're kind of invested in them because they look. There's such a throwback, and I love yeah, like the is... like the corny '80s throwback character. I love that stuff. Um, give them some wins. This is the kind of characters that just randomly get over, and you didn't expect it, right? Yeah. I mean, look at look at the acclaimed. They were doing the scissor me thing, and then it caught on. This is the kind of stuff that just naturally takes takes on life of its own and before you know it these guys are in big matches so you never know i think they're from ovw right the outrunners uh, i don't know that for yeah, sure. yeah they did the nw they, they, they were all over the place they, they NW, did nwa okay. they did they did uh, ovw very cool stuff i'm trying to see yeah they have a good great look so, Such a great so look. Southern wrestling, Southern wrestling personified. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, you know what's funny? Like, even like, remember, like the Beverly Brothers. Yeah. Right. Same deal. 
Really? I mean, it's like that same weird, I, I can't put it, and it's such a different character, right? Like, the Beverly Brothers was so different than this, but just, there's something so nostalgic about two dudes that are loud and screaming wearing purple spandex. <laughs> right up my alley. <laughs> That's uh, right up my alley. <laughs> Roosh defeated Preston Vance. This match was put together by Don Callis so Roosh could prove himself. Open challenge elimination match. Swerve Strickland defeated Tomohiro Ishii. Now, there was a lot of... Did you see the internet discourse about this? Uh, that the match shouldn't have happened or something? I, I don't know. They I did not like right. this, this uh, the elbow to the next spot because oh. of how it looked. And even Rob Van Dam made a comment about it. I don't know. I, you know, I was my, I was kind of like, I was kind of cockeyed at that point for my evening watching this. So I, did, I wasn't affected by it. But I looked online this morning, and so many people were complaining about this. I'm like, it's just one spot in a in an entire match. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Claudio Castagnoli was in the back saying he wants to win the Continental Championship before this year's Continental Classic. So here it comes. The setup is here. I'm looking forward to that match. You know, on I think on Monday, what was it? On Friday when we were talking about this on Matt Man, I told Rich, I'm like, I don't want to see Claudio and, and, and him. But they're doing it on Dynamite uh, in Cardiff, so. Yeah. He said he wants to shut. So I'm curious what the match is on the pay-per-view. Right? Moxley, maybe? Maybe Moxley comes back? Moxley and Okada? At all in? Okay. I'll take that. I'd be very I, into I that. I will take that. Uh, I will take that every day, six yeah. ways a Sunday. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was going to be, uh, honestly, I thought this was going to be the match on the pay-per-view. Uh, now they're going to do it at, in Cardiff on the 21st. Very cool. So you got 10 days. You were 10 days away from that. Chris Statlin and Stokely Hathaway interviewed by Lexi. This they, fascinates uh, me. Yeah. I'll let you go and do it. <laughs> yeah. This, this showed, they showed a promo that Willow Nightingale cut on Rampage where she was interrupted by Ishii. Of all people. <laughs> of all people. Who said he didn't like Stokely either. Are we getting a Stokely Hathaway, Chris Statlander versus Willow Nightingale and Tomohiro Ishii match? Yes, we are. They're yes, we are. All in, <laughs> all in what? Hour. You know, poor Stokely. <laughs> poor Stokely. <laughs> what, a, what a great character he is, huh? Fantastic. Oh, he's so good. He's going to come out in the most ridiculous. I wonder if he'll don't end up doing a bait and switch or something, but it just just the visual of him facing off with Ishii is going to make my day, make my yeah. morning as it will be. <laughs> yeah, you also had Top Flight in Action Andretti and Layla Gray. They were backstage with Lexi. Uh, Lexi said that MXM, I love them, by the way, had asked for this oh. interview but couldn't be found. Okay, they were kneeling, they were kneeling, they were, <laughs> and just stood up. Top Flight would challenge them to a match, but they said they weren't cosmetically cleared to compete. I believe uh, Mansoor has a nail problem. Is that what it is? Yeah, I got to get Mansoor on the show. You know, we were going back and forth because my father, and, and you know, listen, my father's like, he's 70, but like he has bad vision, Okay. And one, I was watching something on TV, and it was Mansoor, and my father thought it was me. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> he goes, and he, look, he goes, you look good. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, that, you look good. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, your body, you look good. <laughs> I'm like, do you yeah. think we all look alike, Dad? <laughs> we all look the same? <laughs> Yeah, that is one of the funniest things Fred has ever said. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sheeta <clears throat> defeated James. This was probably uh, to heat up Sheeta because Sheeta challenged Mercedes Monet for Wednesday. That is a match I want to see. Very good match. I'm curious about this. And then we got the Danielson sit down with Jim Ross, which we spoke about. Danielson said probably by the end of the year, he's neck, neck surgery. This playing it cool and calm and not wanting that title. 
I don't know how I feel about it. Bugs it bugs you. <laughs> it bugs me, man. So it bugs me. You're Brian freaking Danielson. Not to steal someone else's gimmick. You're the, one of the greatest wrestlers that I've ever seen in person or on TV. I'm a huge Danielson fan. There, you can't tell me that this guy isn't great. And what he achieved with that whole yes movement and what he achieved uh, his entire career being a smaller guy is remarkable to me. Uh, I want to see this guy win that title. And he needs it. And then we got AW Trio's title number one contendership match with Christian Cage, House of Black. Versus the Bang Bang Gang, which was Austin Gunn, Col Colton Gunn, and Juice Robinson. It ended in a draw where both teams, essentially what happened was Christian was doing a fast count. They were all laid out. So he's doing a fast 10. And at nine, Buddy Matthews stood up. And as he stood up, <laughs> Christian speared him and then gave the 10 count. Then the patriarchy <laughs> came out and gave them all a beatdown. I guess we're getting a triple threat. Um, okay, cool. Like. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. I'm into this. Uh, all in 2024 so far, we are 11 days away, 12 days away, right? Uh, it'd be 14. 14 um, days two away, weeks. two weeks. Yeah, two, two weeks, weeks away. from today. Yep. Uh, currently, there's 45,000 tickets distributed. There's about 6,100 tickets that remain. I think these are going to go. There'll be, there'll be over 50,000 for the show. Uh, big, massive crowd. Not as big as last year, but doesn't have to be. Nobody was expecting that. With the uh, with a little bit of the decline that they've had, but should be a very interesting show. A lot of things are gonna. Maybe that's where we get the announcement for TV. If that's the case, when we come back, final segment of the show, Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, the final segment of the show. Guys, do me a favor. Hit me up on X. Follow me at Andrew Zarian. I'm there. I've been quiet. I've been a little quiet. The summer was busy for me. September comes. I'm back in the action. We said Tony Khan said that there's going to be a hit of the most important announcement in AEW history coming soon. We also saw Anna J win her stardom debut. I like Anna. She's improving a lot. AEW also revealed the location for Russell Dream 2024. It's taking place on a Saturday. Saturday, October 12th. At the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. Maybe this is Danielson's uh, goodbye match. Maybe it's against uh, a certain announcer. <laughs> Maybe it's against a certain announcer. We don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking forward to that. And also, Triple H congratulates inaugural uh, WWE NIL class member on Olympic gold. 24-year-old Russell is competing what competed in her first Olympics in Paris and took gold in the 100 meter hurdle. Fantastic stuff. The NIL has been a win for them. They put out they put together a very good program here with tremendous, I mean collegiate athletes, I mean the the best of the best really that they're finding. You know, a lot of these sports you do the Olympics, you get an endorsement, you make a couple bucks, but what are you doing afterwards? Yep. If you have a guaranteed job to be on TV, you're, 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 I mean, you're set. Your career is set. It's up to you then. You have an opportunity. Looking forward to everything that's going to come up this week. Brian's back on Monday. Wrestling Observer. I'm back on Tuesday with Garrett Gonzalez on Observer. For we're live, pal. Also Friday, Matt Men with Rich. Where it's now wrestling adjacent, that show. And a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live. We'll see you all next time. Take care.